game show, and you name it, he's done it all. Uh, I think uh, one of the hottest guys around, as they all are tonight, but this is definitely one of the hottest guys. A big hand, please, for Mr. Norm MacDonald. That's very nice of you yelling my name. No problem, Norm. Okay, excellent. So, you ever get a lottery ticket, like buy a lottery ticket? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you ever get one, somebody give you one as a present, like for Christmas or something like that? That's always a weird gift there, huh? I think that's the weirdest gift. Say, here you go. Nothing. That's for me and you, there's nothing at all there. Cardboard I'm giving you this year. Unless it wins, then, you know, then it's good. But imagine if it wins, that'd be the worst, you know? You get, you get to give a guy a ticket and then it wins. You don't want a guy to win, you want him to lose. <laughs> you imagine you get a call for a guy like a week after Christmas, go, what's that, Bill? Yeah, I remember that ticket I gave you. 14 million bucks, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to you. There's no chance of that ticket skyrocketing up. Okay. <laughs> Fucked up the joke because there's some weird things happening over here on my left. That's your right. Booting the guy out. That's your right. Excellent. Kicking the guy out. I love seeing guys get kicked out. I've like got my little camera thing. Uh, crazy, huh? It's crazy. Uh, so, I guess my little lottery joke and the guy getting kicked out thing worked out pretty good. That's exactly the way I planned it. That's what I was hoping for. So, uh, I got some clothes today. You know, I was going to buy some clothes for this little camera thing. This is what I ended up with. I got this green shirt. And uh, you, ever, you ever buy clothes at a store? Huh? I go to this store, you know, and I don't know. I don't know nothing about stuff, I don't know what looks good or anything, you know? I go to this store, and you ever see those stores where, where the things aren't even uh, marked where you can tell which is the girl stuff and which is the guy stuff? Just all the same? You end up choosing something right out of your sex? Yeah, that's embarrassing. And you go, yeah, salesman, I'm interested in this here. And then the guy goes, what are you? It's a girdle. And you go, oh, wow. that was a hat. To me, that's a hat. And sometimes then you gotta go in and you gotta try to close on those little rooms and then people can see you because the door doesn't fit you right, you know? The door go like that on you, the little rodeo doors they got in there. And then people see you like your naked shoulders and naked shins and everything like that. You know? People be shopping you, look at me in your eye, go, you're naked over there, huh? Go, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. The only fun part of the whole experience for me is I get to try on clothes looking at that mirror, you know? They have those special mirrors in department stores where they go in like that and then they cut across and it's some kind of magic mirror where you can see like a hundred different angles of yourself. And I can look at that mirror forever, you know? So forget the shirt, how much for a mirror? <laughs> Wrap up the mirror. Sometimes you see weird angles. You ever see those angles? You look at that angle. Jeez, look at me from that angle over there. I hope nobody ever stands right there and looks at me over there. <laughs> like a big ear from over there. What the hell do people think? I must think I'm ear man or something when they stand over there. But that's how you want to be seen. Hey, have other people see you from different angles, you know? You can't get that with a regular mirror at home, you know? You can try, like, looking at that, like that, you know? But then you see your own eye looking back at you there. That doesn't work at all. The only time you really see yourself is when you don't know it's a mirror. Sometimes you'd be walking down the mall there. Doodly doodly doo. Ho! Oh! That was me there in the mirror there for a second. <laughs> but I love mirrors, you know, but you don't want to be caught looking in a mirror because people think you're vain, you know what you are, but you don't want people to know it. So, sometimes you'd be looking in a mirror, a guy catching you, you know. Oh, the mirror! I was just looking at it. I didn't notice my reflection or anything like that. <laughs> Oh, look, there's me in there. Uh, 
You ever know some mirrors are better than other mirrors? You think all mirrors would be the same, you know? But sometimes you'd be in the bathroom, you get ready for the night, you go, hey, look at me in the mirror there. Oh, I'm looking good. Okay, I'm ready to go out now, looking good like I do. And then, and then you walk by the mirror in the bedroom, you look in there, you go, hey, I look like shit here. I do. What the hell happened between the bathroom and here? This mirror is shot here, right? So okay, now I, I, I gotta lift down here because I don't know how to drive. You know, I can't drive. I gotta get my license. You know, gotta get my driver's license so I can go. You know, I can have ID and stuff. You know, because I have no good ID. All my ID stinks. <laughs> you need a driver's license for ID. You know, or something, a credit card, or something. You know. You ever try to cash a check with that little card that comes with the wallet? They <laughs> <laughs> just look at you. You know. I came down here, you know, we drove down here. And you ever have three people in a car and you have to sit in the back seat all by yourself? Man, that stinks, doesn't it? All lonely back there and everything. And they're having fun up in the front seat. This is one of those cars too, only had two doors, you know? One door for each of the front seat guys, and you don't even get a door in the back seat. Guys. I had to bum a door up one of the front seat guys there. Again. Then you get back there, lonely, everybody having fun in the front seat, and you can't have fun with them. You know, because there's some kind of barricade there, some kind of, you know. All you can do is see the side of their faces having fun up in the front seat. That's how you, can... you see their profiles going. <laughs> some guys won't do. They ever read those guys? They say, "Oh, forget it, man. I have enough of this back seat, front seat garbage, man. I'll just, I'll just stick my head into the front seat." Man, that's a breach of automotive etiquette there, huh? Just invade front seat airspace with her big head there. You know? Alright, what are you guys talking about? It's me for the back seat. No, man, I just hang out back there, you know, try to try to keep together, you know. Uh, you start regressing a child after a while in the back seat, nothing to do and everything, you know? Can't listen to the music, it's way too loud back there, you know? You know, I want you to check for quarters, you can do that, you know, look for quarters. So, yeah. You ever look for quarters, find something grizzly back there? You know? Oh, what the hell was that? That wasn't a quarter there. I think I used to be a cat or something, I don't know what the hell that was. It certainly wasn't legal tender of any sort. Maybe you can make a window, you know, on a little drawing on the window, you know, you go, you know. <laughs> while away a few seconds of that little game. <laughs> After a while, I get so lonely in the back seat, you start trying to make contact with other people in other back seats along the road. <laughs> Look out your little window there. <laughs> Could be a cow in the back of a flatbed truck for all you can. <laughs> livestock, but it notices me there. I think I, I caught a cattle's eye there. <laughs> That's crazy. The weather conditions are hell in the back seat too, aren't they? Anyway, let's turn the window up and, then, and the front seat just gentle breeze licking their ear. Back. back seat giant hurricane going on there. Right Ship flying through the air like the bedroom scene from Poltergeist back there. Right? You always got all kinds of garbage back there too. They never like clean it out. You're always knee deep in Burger King bags and everything back there. <laughs> Big toolbox beside you. Know, like... <laughs> you ever see the little ashtrays they give you in the back seat? Front seat, big deluxe ashtrays up there. No, big giant deluxe deals with big uh, embedded lighters right in there. Furrows to fit a cigar. You know? Back seat that about that big. Thing. You gotta open them up, they're all rusty and everything. And get it open, go, oh, look, some green gum. There's only like capacity one flick, you know, go, oh, it's full. Oh, and then that next one teeter, oh, there it goes. You really tell how you feel about your back seat by the seat belts, you know? You ever see those stinking little seat belts they give you? Just around there, you know? Just bisect you in case of an accident there. <laughs> Those are the seat belts they banned from the front seat back in the 50s. Front seat got, you know, everything up there. You got oh, big things come over here, and, or across a big airbag of a right on impact. A medic jumps out of your glove compartment. Just hit a brick wall because I'm in the front seat. 
you even got a headrest just so you don't hurt your neck, you know, because that would be bad, hurting your neck. Well, a major car accident, you don't want to walk away with a hurt neck. You'd be in the backseat, a headrest just be like a face smasher to you. Know? Mocking you for the whole trip there. It's worse we have to share in a backseat. You ever have to share in a backseat? Like, there'd be three guys all stuffed into the backseat. And you're all, you know, and you're crunched in. You're with two guys, and they're right beside you. And you're in the middle. You ever be, that's the worst. Backseat middle. And that's the worst spot of all, man. Nobody ever chooses that spot, you know? You ever say, hey, can I get backseat middle? Can I get that? You know, People trick you that. You're, okay, you jump in, and I'll jump in, and then the next guy will jump in, but he won't run around and trap you in the middle. And you go, okay, uh, I'll buy that. And then you get all crunched in, you know. And you can't relax. Hey, everybody, like the two guys beside you sit back relax, and you can't because you're responsible for thigh contact or something. I'm written a lot there, you know. As soon as you relax, you go, hey, what are you? Oh, sorry, I forgot. And you're really in a vulnerable position there, backseat middle, no rope around you or nothing there, you know? It's like a cannon waiting to go off there. Hit a red light, bang, right through the window, here you go. Soaring down the road, three miles down the road, people look out, hey look here, backseat middle. There. You go, you fish them into that spot. Like fish. Ah, so I don't have my license, you know, but... Uh, but I always wanted to be a trucker, you know? And, uh, of course, I can't be a trucker because I don't have my driver's license. You know? <laughs> Makes the resume look pretty skimpy, you know, as soon as I see that. You know, when you get to the hobbies after they see that you don't have your license, you know? Too bad, too, because my hobby's collecting old trucks. But I always wanted to be a trucker, you know? Driving a big truck. They're very intimidating, though, when you're in a car. You ever be behind a big, big truck full of trembling logs right in front of you? Holy cow! Sometimes you see those trucks where the cargo of the truck will be just wrecked cars. Just a bunch of wrecked cars. You go, holy cow, man, I hit this guy, I won't even notice. It's become part of the haul. Six months later, oh, there's a guy in this one. Go, yeah, can you let me out already? I got a kink. Yeah, a trucker, that'd be great, you know. When you're on the road, people say, hey, if you want to eat, follow the truckers, because they know the best restaurants. You know? And that's true to a certain extent. Like, truckers know the best restaurants, but truckers' idea of a good restaurant is not great food, you know? Truckers' idea of a good restaurant, big, giant parking lot. <laughs> Basically, all they care about, you know? You have a big, giant parking lot at your house. Trucks just show up there. You got anything to eat? <laughs> But sometimes I go in there and just pretend to be a trucker, you know? I'll just walk into a truck stop, get out of the car, pretend to be a trucker. Because they don't know, you know? And you can just pretend. <laughs> sometimes they'll buy it. Sometimes they'll, they'll talk to you like a trucker. They'll go, what are you hauling? That's what they say. What are you hauling? Then you got to make something up. you got to go, pig iron. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I'm going over there now. Ah! I'm still a trucker, though. Ah! Then you sit down and eat at their big tables. Everything big in a truck stop, right? Big oak tables about that thick and big. Everything's big for a big trucker. Big. Forks about that big. You know? <laughs> Spear giant spuds with them and eat them. Whole. <laughs> they bring you coffee. You don't even ask, you know, because they say, here's your coffee. You're a trucker, there's your coffee. You go, ah! It's the greatest. And they bring you your little menus and you order your stuff there, you know. And they're always very simple, minimal kind of menus, eh? right to the point, down to earth. Items on it be like, uh, egg, <laughs> coffee, you never see, two fluffy firm fresh eggs, and light but hot pot of coffee. So fuck it, bring me an egg, I got no time for adjectives here. I got a trucker here, egg, all I want, egg. <laughs> now, I love to admit that the little girls, the, the women, you know, they come and they're Marge. That's their names, waitresses. <laughs> Marge, right there. And you, and you talk to them like no other waitresses, you know, you go, ah, Marge, ah, I'll marry you one day, ah! They go, oh, my husband left me behind. But, oh, 
almost call myself Bert. No. Ah, then you buy your stuff, you know, you eat your little thing and everything, and it's great. Man. Coffee, limitless coffee, endless cup and bottomless loaf of bread, and that's the life. Sometimes they bring it, you ever see that stuff they bring, it's not even cream, like it's not cream and it, it looks like cream, but it's not cream. Like you say, hey, bring me some cream, and they bring it and it says, not cream, right on it. Says, and you go, hey, this is not cream, I asked for, I asked for cream, this is not cream, here, this is not cream. Sometimes they just have like weird code, like edible oil product, you know, what the hell is that? It says edible right on it, you know, that's not good, you know. Not the most ringing endorsement you could ask about food stuff there. What the hell does edible mean? It means it just barely passed some test, that's what it means. But you go to those truck stops, and then after you eat, you always go to the you always go to the gift shop and buy a little gift, you know? Like they'll have maybe a hat. They always have a hat with a little joke on it, a little dirty joke, you know? Be a, like a rhyme. I mean, that and that and a cock. That and that and a word that rhymes with cock. Well, yeah, give me the hat with the cock and the rhymes. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you see those hats, they don't even, they're just dirty, they don't make no joke at all. It was about some one shit hat. And it had a chunk of shit on the hat. <laughs> it came in children's sizes too, that was a frightening part. Oh, it was Billy's birthday around the corner, imagine his look of delight. <laughs> and so he has a shit hat hat there. <laughs> Actually, psychiatrists now say there's nothing better for a seven-year-old self-esteem than a piece of human waste on his head. That's not I used to think it was a bad thing back in the dark ages of psychology. Thank God, we've come a long way since then. Wow, well, I forgot to do my little watch thing. I was putting on my little watch thing, and then a guy started screaming at me like a maniac, and I forgot to hit it. You know? Some guy with a well thumb copy of Catcher in the Rye in the front seat. Here. Okay, so you guys have been great, and thank you very much. Enjoy all the rest of the show. Yeah, big hand, keep it going. Norm McDonald.